what I'm hoping to do, and we'll see how the technology works, is uh, I want to share my screen with everybody. If people uh, can hear me, maybe someone can type in the group chat there to let me know that uh, everything's on track with that, though. So I want to talk about uh, you know the future of money and the future of uh, all this fun stuff. So I have a great quote here from Brian Armstrong, one of the, the founders of Coinbase.com, right? So he says, digital currency may be the most effective way the world has ever seen to increase economic freedom. If this happens, the implications are profound. It could lift many countries out of poverty, improve the lives of billions of people, and accelerate the pace of innovation in the world. And of course, everybody that's here that's part of a liberal land appreciates and understands those ideas and are very excited about those ideas. And I'm just amazed at the, you know, the amazing speakers that we have lined up today. And I grew up reading books by David Friedman and Walter Block and being a, a Harry Brown fan, and then later on a Ron Paul fan who we have here today as well. So it's just really amazing to see all this happening. And uh, if you're a part of Liberland, you probably already have a pretty decent idea of what economic freedom is all about. Uh, another word for it is voluntarism, right? Allowing you to do anything that's peaceful. Uh, another, another guy whose book I was a big fan of that I'm guessing some of you guys are, are, have heard of is uh, Anything That's Peaceful by Leonard Reed. It was another just fantastic book that influenced me as a young man. And so basically, the more economic freedom we can have in the world, including digital worlds like the one we just saw, uh, the better it is for, for everybody all over the world. And uh, that brings us to actual statistics here of exactly why it's so important. We have, you can see on the left here, in, uh, in Hong Kong and Singapore and New Zealand and Switzerland, we have, you know, the, the countries around the world with the most economic freedom. And everybody knows pretty clearly that you would much rather be living in Hong Kong than in North Korea, Venezuela, or Cuba, some of the countries with the least amount of economic freedom in the world. And so we can see very, very clearly there on, on the left on, versus on the right, Countries with more economic freedom are places that people love to live and have a high standard of living and high rates of economic growth. And the countries on the right there are the countries with the least amount of economic freedom. And because of that, they have a, a lower standard of living and less economic growth and uh, all those things that we appreciate. And sometimes, uh, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. So we can see Hong Kong in the 1950s was just this little, you know, sleepy fishing port. And then Hong Kong today is one of these, you know, world-class, amazing cities. If any, if any of you haven't been to Hong Kong, it's really an amazing experience when you fly in there and then you're, you know, on your way into town, you can just feel the economic power and the economic energy that's there in Hong Kong. And, and that, that's in part or in large part due to the economic freedom that they've had there. And it's just, uh, you can just feel it in the air and the hustle and the bustle of the, the people that are there. And we can also see over that same time period, we have Havana, Cuba. And uh, Havana, Cuba from the 1950s versus Havana, Cuba today, hasn't really made very much progress uh, there. And so uh, it could have, but the problem there is they didn't have the economic freedom in those decades to do that. So we saw Hong Kong make this amazing transformation and Cuba in the same time frame hardly made any, uh, any progress at all comparatively. And so that brings us to well, why is economic freedom so important? Well, it leads to higher per capita income, higher life expectancy, higher literacy rates, better income for the poorest 10% in society, improved environmental protection, fewer wars and violent conflicts, and higher self-reported happiness of the citizens with less corruption and bribery. And I'm sure all of us Liberlanders appreciate that, right? We're excited and we see that, and that's why Liberland is so important to the world, uh, because we can help make all these things a reality. And if we can demonstrate it really clearly for the whole world to see in Liberland, hopefully it'll drag the rest of the world in our direction, uh, because they can see that freedom works. Freedom lifts everybody up and makes the world a better place for everybody. And so that, I'm really excited to help set a good example for the world with Liberland on that front. But here we have some, some charts so you can see very, very clearly. Uh, in dark green there is uh, the most economically free countries uh, versus red, the least economically free countries. And you can see the, the income level of the poorest 10% in society is far, far, far higher in countries with more economic freedom than in countries with less economic freedom. The correlation there is so... Uh, uh, so clear. And again, we have the income per capita. You can see in countries with more economic freedom, the average income per, per capita is much, much higher than in countries with less economic freedom, right? It's, it's plain as day there in that chart, you can see it. And again, we have uh, the adult literacy rate as well. Uh, in countries with more economic freedom, more people know how to read. In countries with less economic freedom, uh, less people know how to read. And is that the uh, cause or effect there, it, it might be a bit of both, um, but it's very, very, very clear with the correlation there. Um, and again, life expectancy, right? That's something that's very important to everybody right now with this crazy coronavirus uh, stuff happening around the world. 
uh, people in more economically free countries live longer than in countries with less economic freedom. Uh, and I think it's worth pointing out that if you, the coronavirus is absolutely killing people, people are dying from the coronavirus, but if you quash out all the economic freedom in the entire world and grind the entire world's economy to a halt because you're scared of the coronavirus, you're likely to cause a lot more deaths than the coronavirus would have caused itself. So uh, we need to take both of those things into consideration, the, da the dangers of the coronavirus and the dangers of you know, squashing the, the economy and squashing the economic freedom around the world, which is uh, happening across the world right now, which is very uh, frightening. And again, we can see uh, unemployment rates in countries with more economic freedom, way more people have jobs than in countries with less economic freedom. And that, that makes a lot of sense, right? If it's a, a bunch of red tape and bureaucracy to give somebody a job, well, fewer people are gonna get jobs because fewer people are gonna jump through all those regulatory uh, hoops to do so. So again, if you want everybody to be able to have the option of having a job, uh, more economic freedom is the key to that. And we've seen that firsthand here with the coronavirus stuff. Governments impose all sorts of uh, restrictions on the economy and who's allowed to employ what for what, you know, essential or non-essential businesses. Well, guess what? Tons of people lost their jobs. So uh, we saw that happening here over the last couple of weeks. And again, infant mortality, right? In countries with more economic freedom, far more babies survive being born than in countries with less economic freedom. So it's a very, very, very clear correlation right there. So it's literally a life and death matter. If you want more babies to survive childbirth, if you want more people to live into old age, more economic freedom uh, helps enable that. So we should be advocating for more economic freedom around the world. Um, and again, ch children in the labor force, right? If you're really worried about kids working in, you know, little sweatshops and this and that, and I implore you to, you know, read Walter Block's books on the subject as well, who will be speaking here later today, uh, because people don't work in sweatshops because uh, because that's the the their favorite option uh, available to them. It's because it's the only option there. It's the best option available to them. Uh, but anyhow. In countries with more economic freedom, less people are, are pushed into having that uh, uh, thrust upon them. So uh, anyhow, if you want fewer kids being working in the labor force, more economic freedom enables that. If you want more kids working uh, you know, hard, long days, uh, well, rest restrict the amount of economic freedom in the country. And uh, the only choice those families will have would be between working in sweatshops and, or eating or not. So again, more economic freedom makes everybody's life uh, better off. And so we can't see that we can't say that correlation proves causation, but we see example after example, time and time again, like some really, really strong inferences uh, can be made here. And I implore you guys, you know, if, if you're here and interested in Liverland, you've probably been already been reading people like, you know, Milton Friedman and Ludwig von Mises and Murray Rothbard and, and then, you know, the people that are participating today, David Friedman and Walter Block. Like I grew up reading their books and they really had a big impact on me, uh, especially, uh, David Friedman's book, Future Imperfect. He wrote that book like 20 years ago, but if you haven't read it, it's still fantastic today. And it just shows what an amazing visionary David Friedman is predicting all these things that are happening now today with these virtual worlds and, and virtual currencies. And uh, it really helped me get excited about Bitcoin when I heard about it for the first time, thanks to reading uh, David Friedman's books there as well. And so we can see that Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies impact on economic freedom is that it makes it easier to start a business it enforces property rights, it promotes free trade, it enables freedom of contract, and it enables people to opt out of corrupt systems. All the exact same things that Liberland is trying to create uh, and, and enable as well, which is why I've been uh, such a proud supporter of Liberland for so many years here as well, because we need to set these examples and build the tools and build the infrastructure to enable people to have more economic freedom around the world. And so we have another great quote here by Brian Armstrong. And he says that if we can create more economic freedom around the world, it will serve as a giant economic stimulus package for the world, accelerate innovation, reduce wars, make the poorest 10% better off, overthrow corrupt governments, and raise happiness. So what, a, what a powerful, wonderful set of things to be uh, working towards. And uh, Brian's been doing an amazing job of that over at Coinbase. So thank you for that, Brian. And I say that Bitcoin Cash and digital currencies are the best tools the world has ever seen to accomplish these goals. And so a lot of people confuse one cryptocurrency for another and they think you only have to support one. No, you can support all of them. Uh, you can support anything in the world that enables more economic freedom for the world. And the reason I'm so passionate about Bitcoin Cash is because today I think it's the one that has the best shot at bringing the most economic freedom to the most number of people around the world. And uh, that's why I want to share it with everybody here. So um, I want you to all help tell your friends. You can get started today with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. And here, if you look, this is something here. If you have a, your Bitcoin.com wallet or any wallet that's capable of scanning a private key, 
Each and every one of these QR codes here is $100 of Bitcoin Cash. So I ask you, grab out your phone and start scanning, but uh, just one per person, please, is what I ask, right? So it's real, you know, there's $2,000 on this page total, 100 times 20, uh, 20 people. So uh, two, 20 of you are going to get $100 of Bitcoin Cash right now just by scanning it. Uh, and it will go directly from this image on your screen, right into your phone, on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain for about a 20th of a penny. I don't know who you are or who's scanning it or anything about that. You can then go and toss it to your uh, Cash Fusion or Cash Shuffle uh, wallet there, and you'll have a uh, really, really strong privacy with Bitcoin Cash as well. Thanks to Cash Fusion, right now today, uh, you can shuffle up your Bitcoin Cash with other people, and there's more potential combinations of shuff shuffling than there are in the uh, atoms in the entire universe. So that's a really, really big deal. So hopefully people scan some of those there. And then uh, here's another uh, 10 of them that you guys can scan as well. And if you want to make your own gifts like these that you can give out to people, you can head on over to gifts.bitcoin.com and you can make these in any value you want. You can make them for 10 cents or you can make them for $10,000, you know, whatever you want. You can hand them out to trick-or-treaters. You can leave them for, uh, you know, as tips for people in restaurants. This is really a fantastic way to spread more digital currency adoption around the world and therefore spread more economic freedom around the world because like most of you that are on this call watching this already know, uh, digital currencies basically give you the ability to opt out of these corrupt systems and tell tell people, no, this is my money, this doesn't belong to you, no amount of violence can solve a math problem, uh, please leave me alone and I'll leave you alone and we can both go on our own uh, merry way and cooperate voluntarily but not uh, not be forced into you know doing somebody else's bidding with the threat of violence, which is what uh, statism is uh, ultimately at the end of the day. So. Anyhow, if you're scanning that, uh, fantastic. And I'll show you one last thing here. Uh, I think we can see, this is where I made it on gifts.bitcoin.com. And if we scroll down, look, we can see people already claimed these right here. And there's somebody just claimed another one right there. And we can see in real time as these get claimed, uh, and we can monitor on the blockchain. So we can see somebody claimed all of those as well, except for there's two more here that haven't been claimed. So if you still have your camera, there, another one just got claimed. And so, uh, there's one more down there to be claimed, and uh, there's two more up here, and I'll even zoom in a little bit so it'll be easier for you guys to scan. Uh, and we'll, So there's two left. There goes one, and so there's one more left for somebody to claim, and we can see this. This is happening in real time. These are real transactions on the blockchain, and it looks like everybody uh, claimed them all. So uh, great job to everybody who just did that. And uh, for anybody that wants to know more about me, visit Bitcoin.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Roger K. Beer. I've been a voluntarist for over 20 years, and I've been reading all these Austrian economics books that uh, you know, made me get so excited about Bitcoin when I heard about it for the first time and led me to become the very first person in the entire world to start investing in this ecosystem. And that's why uh, I'm so excited about projects like this, projects like Liberland, and spreading the ideas of free markets and voluntarism uh, around the world. But uh, I'm just one guy, and so I need everybody's help to do it. We need to spread these ideas to the world, and uh, I would love your help all, all to do that. So thank you so much, and from there, uh, I'll turn it back uh, to the event organizers. Thank you all so much.